My wife manages me by punishing our children, and I find it challenging not to cave into her demands because if I don't, our kids suffer. I must do things a certain way at a certain time and with an approved attitude or she'll find a way to exact retribution. And I simply learn to pay the price. However, when it involves the children, I do capitulate often. And it's not the kind of punishment that would make child protection services get involved. And th this person goes on to say that um, separation or divorce is not an option. It won't alleviate the issue. And then he says, I know I'm responsible to do good, act righteously, and to love. However, I'm completely in the dark, helpless, and likely without hope. Can you help? The first thing that I want to say is that any man who allows a woman to push him around is no man at all. And that pretty much includes all men. Of course, a woman should never under any circumstances ever allow a man to abuse her in any way whatsoever. We've come to a point in our lives at, the, at this level of existence where we have actually come to look upon our capacity to justify things as a form of strength. And the only thing that justification does in this instance that I'm living with someone who I say exacts punishment on me through my children the only reason that I would ever allow for something like that to happen is because I absolutely don't know who I am. And I allow everyone else, in this instance, my wife, to tell me who I am. And then I find a way to justify it by using the children. Sir, it's your weakness that's the problem, not your wife. That's the only problem that any of us have, honestly. And what is the inherent weakness other than this deeply bred unconscious belief that somehow or other as a human being I cease to exist unless others acknowledge me in the way that I'm used to being acknowledged even if that's to punish me and whip me. That's called that's called enabling a relationship. And if you're still listening, sir, I'm not telling you what to do. I am telling you that no one abuses you without you first agreeing to be abused. And the first level of abuse that takes place is not what another does to us. It's what we do to ourselves and then blame others for so there's a significant difference in realizing the situation I'm in that I say it cannot be reconciled by me separating or divorce and I'm not advocating an action like that. I am advocating that you divorce yourself, that you separate yours from yourself immediately. And by that I mean from everyone and anything inside of you that continues to tell you that you have to live as the whipping boy for someone who can't stand themselves or they wouldn't be doing to you what they do to you. You've got everything backwards. Everything's upside down. I'll give you some hope. There lives inside of you a part of you that would no more let another human being be negative around you, abuse you, punish you in any other way then you would walk in, into the ocean where you saw a great white shark swimming. It would never happen. It would never happen. You would agree to die before you would accept living in a condition like that. You would agree to die rather than agree to be punished by anyone 
for any reason whatsoever. You just don't know how deep it runs. That's freedom. Freedom is understanding that within you lives something, a conscience, an order of your own being that understands without thinking that relationships are meant to support and strengthen each other and relationships in which suffering is produced such as you're described, describing is intended to strengthen you, not make you weaker. Not strengthen your resentment towards someone. Imagine the relationship in which what is strengthened in me is my negativity. Should never happen. And I can hear already, but you don't understand my situation. I've said this before, the only thing that troubles any of us about any other human being is what we want from them. If there's some reason that it's impossible for you to be apart from an an unconscionable human being physically, then live with them physically and be apart from them. Let them do what they have to do so that they can reap the reward of their own ill-begotten nature. Don't be a part of their ill-begotten nature. Use them instead of letting that nature in them that's in the dark use what is in the dark in you. Because if you don't, and you already know this, sir, the writing's on the wall. The violence is growing in you every day. And it will express itself, and when it does, it will justify in her mind everything that she has done to you. And then she will use the very thing that she produced in you to punish you further. You must see this. If you do, there's hope. There is no hope if you don't see it and agree to be changed by what you see. So we have to, we have to pay, we have to become responsible for the seeds that have been planted in the past that are now flowering into something I don't want here that's, in the that's, present. That's a good point, Katie. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Look, is there anybody here in the room listening to this, watching this, is there anybody here who has lived a life with a, no stains whatsoever? Huh? Anybody here go through this life without making a single mistake yet? No. So the mistakes that we make are the expression of a body of intelligence, in quotes, an expression of our nature that came into a moment and met the moment as best it could with what it is, and because it was incomplete in itself, ignorant, in the dark of itself, it then planted something from itself to reconcile the condition, and all it did was reseed itself. The self that is reseeded will once again flower. When it flowers, you are given the opportunity to see, oh, look what's flowered. I, don't, I am responsible for what's appeared, but I will never change what is appearing unless I change the part of myself that helps seed that thing. Right. That's why there's no, there's no such thing as it'll get better tomorrow in a relationship, in any relationship, whether it's with another human being or with yourself. You are either working to separate yourself inwardly from the part of you that seeded this unhappiness, this regret, this anger, or it is being receded in you again. There's a a certain ground in, in all sleeping human beings. And because it's the ground of the sleeping mind, quite literally, the sleeping mind has no actual understanding of its existence or how its existence acts for the human being under certain circumstances, such as this relationship, which, by the way, is just a description of most human relationships. And the ground is this. I am afraid to be alone. I don't want to be alone. And because you don't hear it and you don't see it, it speaks to you in urgent tones 
in every moment in which something appears by which by its very instant you should separate from it immediately. Uh, uh, not just a person that's negative. Why do you think men and women entertain punishing thoughts and feelings? Your own thoughts and feelings sit over you and hammer you. Why? I'd rather be in the company of that than be alone. Which means the way to freedom is through aloneness. Which doesn't mean that you become isolated from humanity. It means that you begin to understand the purpose of your relationships with human beings, which is to act as revelation of what lies at the ground of you, so that in this realization of what the ground of you is, you can begin to understand, well, that is, that is not I. Yeah, I'm terrified. I know I should say something to someone. I know that I ought not accept any more excuses. Not just for others, but for myself. I know I ought not. And yet every day I do it and I do it and I do it. Why? Because I don't want to be alone. Facing life with what I am as I am. Why? Because in that ground there's something telling me that as I am with what I am, there's no way that I can cut it. I'll be in some terrible, terrible, dire strait thrown out into the darkness someplace and you couldn't be more in the darkness someplace if you tried the way that you are because you sell your soul for 30 pieces of silver every time something comes up why i don't want to be alone you have no idea the power in being alone then you can be with everyone you can be in any situation and it will be used for you by you in such a way that you will you will thank the stars the day came when you realized it was better to be your own person than to be a star in the eyes of a hundred thousand persons. So, do listen to tomorrow's talk, sir. I'm going to talk about the, the root system of a human being and what lives in that root system and how it continues to produce what it does and what we are empowered to do about it. Let's go on. All right, and that talk will be August 23rd, 2015. Thank you.